Come on in, guys. Welcome to Idle Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about five times Survivors stole food rewards from other players. This is what happens when you brainstorm video ideas on an empty stomach. We all know that Survivor tests the limits of hunger with limited rations of plain white rice as the primary food source on most seasons. So honestly, it's no small wonder that only a handful of players have ever straight up stolen food. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I probably would. Before we begin, I'm going to keep this to food theft we saw on the show. So although there's some hearsay about alleged food stealing behind the scenes, I won't be covering those woomers, no matter how reliable their sourcing is. Come on guys, you trying to get me sued? Additionally, in order to narrow the scope, I won't be counting overeating the island's natural resources. So no coconut bandits, I'm sorry to say. I mean, if it's growing on a tree and you eat it, that's not really stealing, is it? That's just eating food that exists. I'm also not going to cover Jay's use of the reward steal advantage, since he stole the reward from David, then took David along on the reward anyway. Plus, it's not like that is terribly notorious anyway. Does anyone even remember the reward steal advantage, other than to laugh at it? All that said, let's get all the fixins on some of Survivor's most memorable food thefts, ranked by notoriety. At number 5 is Julie's trail mix theft in Survivor San Juan del Sur. At the merge feast of San Juan del Sur, there was a pretty incredible spread. Lobster, expensive cheeses, a nice red wine, and that old classy dinner party standby, trail mix. At the end of the feast, the castaways pack up all the leftovers to bring back to camp, and Julie bags all the trail mix, then just conveniently forgets to bring it out later, hoping to hoard it all for herself. While she's away sunbathing, or whatever it is she does, Alec and Wes realize the trail mix is missing and lead the charge on finding the missing food. Oh, here it is. Julie gets caught and pretty much every other player in the game has a massive meltdown over this, accusing her of being all manner of four and five letter words. Personally, I think Julie's trail mix theft and then her leaving it out in basically plain sight for everyone to see was a subconscious attempt to sabotage her own game. Once her boyfriend John was voted out early, her heart very clearly wasn't in the game anymore, and I think she knew that there was only one more round of pre-jury eliminations and she wanted it to be her so she could go be with her boo. Which is fair, he is rather charming. If you, if you were a man, I would knock your teeth out. However, when it became clear that Julie was just another number in an alliance and was at no risk of going anywhere, despite committing a rather egregious survivor crime, she just went ahead and quit, ensuring she'd be the last pre-merge player and could enjoy a vacation with John Rocker on CBS's Dime. I don't know, that's just my speculation. I wasn't there and I'm not Julie. Wouldn't that be crazy if I was though? Still, Julie stealing a few handfuls of trail mix and the subsequent meltdown that accompanied it shows just how valuable food is in Survivor, no matter how bland it is. At number 4 is Clarence, Diane, and the whole can of beans situation in Survivor Africa. Africa featured perhaps the harshest conditions in Survivor history, and early on, two players on Boran, Diane and Jesse, were extremely sick and dehydrated, to the point that they could barely stand upright or function at all. After Boran lost the first immunity challenge, everyone heads off to the water well except for Clarence, who stays behind to look after a very ill Diane. While the rest of the tribe is away, Clarence opens up a can of beans for Diane so she can get some energy and by his own admission, ate a little bit as well. When the rest of the tribe comes back from the water well, this single can of beans becomes the magical fruit of drama. The more you eat, the more you're the boot. In a very uncomfortable scene, Big Tom and Lex confront Clarence, both lecturing him on following the apparent tribe rules on eating together. Alright guys, we bet 48 hours ago, but that's cool. After Clarence apologizes for opening the beans, Tom then condescendingly makes him apologize individually to every single person in the camp. Then, uh, things get heated. If you did that in the army, you made a bad call in the army, you'd be kicked out of there so Hell, they'd shoot you! They'd shoot you! You'd be code red I'd your shoot you! There were only, there were only three... No, 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 no
To add to Clarence's tribal troubles, Diane then straight up throws him under the bus, using her last ounce of energy to say she didn't even want any beans, and that Clarence opened the beans only for himself. The tribe ultimately votes out Diane here because she's so sick, but this incident completely overtakes tribal discussions for the first few rounds of the game, and Clarence came dangerously close to getting voted out early. This is a situation where pretty much everyone's at least a little wrong. Clarence, in my opinion, really did want to help Diane, He's quite clearly a kind and empathetic guy. However, eating quote unquote more than your fair share is one of the cardinal sins of Survivor, and he simply underestimated how much backlash he'd get for it. And then Lex and especially Tom take things way too far with their lecture, even after he's apologized, in a tone that is inappropriate at best. The whole thing just leaves a gross taste in my mouth, and I'm glad that eventually this tribe moved past it. Craziest thing about this whole ordeal? Boran only found out about the open can of beans because Tom smelled the scent of beans in the air. What? Who are you? At number three is Taylor from Survivor Millennials vs. Gen X, who stole pretzels and dried fruit from the merge feast, stashed them in a jar and buried them in the sand so he could make some midnight munchie runs without his tribe's knowledge. This whole idea came to Taylor because in his words, He's pretty good with mason jars. I'm pretty good with mason jars and, you know, canning stuff. So I pull a classic survivor move. Okay, disregarding what a young millennial might store in a mason jar, just about everyone hears Taylor clanking the jars around in the middle of the night, and Adam actually gets up and joins Taylor during his midnight snack attack in an attempt to forge the unlikeliest of alliances between the two of them. He even, somewhat foolishly, tells Taylor about his reward steal advantage, so they each have a secret of the other. Of course, Taylor's still saltier than those pretzels that Adam voted out his showman's figgy, and he and his alliance actually end up voting for Adam this round. When it becomes clear the next episode that either Taylor or Jay is next to go, they share a last meal together, and then at Tribal, Taylor tries his darndest to take Adam down with him falsely saying that Adam helped him steal the food, and then revealing Adam's reward steal, vastly overestimating how much people will care about the lamest advantage ever. Taylor got himself canned here, but there is a happy ending. In an act of good faith, Jay later unburies the food and returns it to the tribe, who enjoy the soggy pretzels that were rightfully theirs. And Taylor went on to explore the world. And I've done a lot. Beekeeper, I've brewed beer, snowboard instructor, gone to North Dakota. Next stop, South Dakota. At number two was Nayanka in Survivor Nicaragua, who stole flour, buried it, then took us on an incredible roller coaster ride of increasingly bizarre and hilarious excuses. On day 20, Nayanka made tortillas for breakfast, but in pretty poor form, the tribe leaves their chef a single tiny tortilla even though she specifically made a massive tortilla for herself. I don't blame Nayanka for being mad. These tortillas look legitimately good. In revenge, Nayanka steals the flour used to make the tortillas and buries it in the sand. Apparently unsatisfied with that level of sabotage, she goes back for more, stealing some fruit, pots, pans, bowls, pretty much everything but the kitchen sink. Although if they had one, she'd probably bury that too. She shares some of the stolen fruit with Alina, who through excruciating lip-smacking decries her position in the tribe. I gotta get some numbers. Once everyone notices that, like, everything is missing, Alina and Chase convince Nay to fess up, which she does, sort of. But instead of just owning up to what she did, first she says she only put the flower in her bag, then put it back. Then she says she was only taking the flower and burying it underground to ration it. Really, this was for your own protection, guys. The main alliance decides to protect Nayanka this round, though, since she's, you know, part of that alliance, and work overtime to pin all the blame on Alina, who ends up taking the fall for Nayanka's actions and gets voted out in one of the more confusing eliminations ever. In fact, we never really see why everyone hates Alina, or why they were so eager to pretend she was equally as responsible for the flower theft as Nayanka, but clearly there's major animosity there. I mean, what the heck is this? You are a 100% grade A dirt squirrel. 
and it's time for you to go home. You know, I'm not even going to Google that. The most notorious food theft in Survivor history is Sandra's sugar theft in Survivor Game Changers. No, not that sugar theft. This one. At this point, Sandra was the only two-time winner in Survivor history, and as such, perhaps had the biggest target on her back of any returning player ever going into Game Changers, only rivaled perhaps by the winners in All-Stars and Parvati in Heroes vs. Villains. Despite being a major challenge liability as well, Sandra handily got to the swap, where she was immediately targeted by JT. But Sandra did what Sandra does best, seizing on some petty drama brewing between JT and Michaela over sugar. You see, post-swap Nuku had a coffee set, and Michaela's bizarre coffee order of seven drips of coffee and a tablespoon of sugar was really rubbing JT the wrong way. JT the coffee snob. Who could have guessed? So in order to widen the schism between the two, Sandra just finishes off all the sugar herself, practically licking the jar clean as she does. This is how you do dishes when you don't have a dishwasher, right? As dentists everywhere cringe, JT immediately blames Michaela, Michaela blames JT, and all the heat is taken off Sandra instantly as the tribe is consumed with sugar drama, the likes of which haven't been seen since Survivor Gabon. I honestly think this is the best non sarah move in all of Game Changers. It's such classic manipulation pulled off to utter perfection. Even at Tribal Council, Probst can't believe that someone is going to get voted out over sugar. Literally right after JT's gone, Sandra announces to everyone that she's the sugar snatcher, and the entire tribe just laughs about it. And the queen stays queen. Got nothing else for ya. If you want to be sweeter than Michaela's coffee order, like and subscribe, and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.